Welcome back to the channel guys. On today's video, I'm gonna be giving you tips for editing in Adobe Lightroom Mobile. I've been uploading to Instagram every day, so I've been editing those photos here in Adobe Lightroom Mobile, and I really like it. It's got almost all the features of full desktop Adobe Lightroom. Alrighty, so let's jump right into it. And I'm gonna show what I'm doing kind of over here on the screen. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to import your photos. And you do that by clicking this little button right down here that's got the plus with the picture, and then you can import them directly from a camera. You can do that with something like this little SD card reader. I found that this works really nicely with an iPhone. It kind of recognizes it as just like, almost like a thumb drive would on your computer. You just plug that in, choose the photos you want, and go ahead and add them to your library. Or if you've got a newer camera, you can do it wirelessly a lot of the time. And that's actually what I do with my Canon EOS RP. I actually just transfer the photos wirelessly through Canon's app. I'm not sure why everybody's complaining about that app. I've never had a problem just transferring photos. Maybe they're trying to do some of the more advanced features there. So anyway, once you've got your photos, you go ahead and tap this little button down here, the plus photo icon, and then you can add them from your camera roll or you can directly import them from the SD card. I've already got the photos that I wanna edit today picked out. I'm just gonna jump over to this folder that I put those in. So let's dive right into it and I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as we go. So this first photo is actually an aerial panorama of some trees. I don't know if you can kind of see that there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and edit it. So right now it's looking pretty flat, a little gray. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of increase the saturation first. Kind of see what that does. That definitely helps a lot. I don't know that I love that these leaves are looking kind of pink. I think they're supposed to be a little more orange, just kind of how the camera recognized them there. Let's go ahead and shift the white balance a little more towards the yellow side. It's a little too cool right now. Then I do want to up the vibrance just a little bit. It might be a little oversaturated, but we're going to work on that here in a minute. And then what I like to do is I'll come into this color selection and I'm going to go ahead and shift those kind of pinks more towards the red side. And what that's going to do is it's going to take everything that the photo recognizes as pink and it's gonna go ahead and push those more towards red. And then we can come into the red and kind of push it more towards the orange if we want. There we go. Already you can see a pretty big difference just with those few color upgrades. Next, let's go into lighting and we're gonna go ahead and kind of increase the contrast just a bit. Now, when you have a flatter image like that, it's great because you can do that. You can increase that contrast in post where if you have too much contrast, it can be a little hard to take it out properly. All right, so that's starting to look pretty good. A couple basic things you're gonna wanna do um, over here. You can always take out as much color noise reduction as you want without losing detail. Now, if you start using the standard noise reduction, you'll start to lose detail in your image. It'll get really soft and kind of muddy. Uh, sharpening, we could go ahead and sharpen this just a little bit. You wanna be careful with the sharpening slider. It can be just a bit too much sometimes. Effects. Let's go ahead and add just a touch of clarity. Bring out the detail in those trees. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. That looks pretty good, but there is one thing I want to do. You see this road right here? I want to actually kind of highlight that road and make it kind of the subject of the photo. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and hit selective and hit plus, grab this little circle thingy here. And we're going to make kind of an elongated oval and reposition that right over that road. There we go. And then what we wanna do is we wanna invert that. And one way we're gonna highlight this is just by using the light to kind of draw the eye in. So you've probably heard before that your eye is naturally drawn to whatever the brightest point in an image is. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something to kind of force your eye to look right there. It's already kind of on the one third line, so that's good. It's got a leading line look to it. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to bring the exposure down on everything outside of that road. There we go. We don't want it to be too dramatic though. All right. So that's what we're looking at now. Kind of draws your eye into that road. I think that might have been a bit too much. So let's go ahead and go here. Kind of increase the size of this so it's a little softer. There we go and then bring that back up just a bit. 
but we're going to use another effect to kind of do something similar again. We're actually going to go to the clarity tool, kind of bring down the clarity everywhere else. There we go. I think that looks pretty nice. Honestly, I would say that photo is just about good to go. Might make some slight lighting tweaks here. Bring up the shadows just a bit to kind of match everything. Mm, I'd say we could bring up the whites to kind of highlight those trees. Crunch the blacks just a little bit to add a little more contrast. And maybe just bring the exposure up a hair. Alright guys, there we go. That looks pretty good. Alrighty, on to the next image. Now, this is a vital step in the editing process. I've decided to reward myself for every photo that I edit with one peanut M&M. Helps with portion control and keeps you on task. All right. Next up, I have this beautiful sunrise shot that I took just the other day. All right, with this photo, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna straighten out that horizon line. This photo was actually shot handheld, so we definitely wanna straighten that out and uh, make it look just a little bit prettier and make it just a little bit easier on the eye that way. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna crop it and straighten it out. And because I might like to upload this photo to Instagram, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to a four by five, which is the same as eight by 10. And then we're gonna straighten it out. And you see when I tap that little degree dial down there, you'll see these lines pop up. So what I like to do is try to find a line close to the horizon and just kind of shift it till it looks level with that line. Kind of match it up. There we go. That's looking better. I think it needs just a little more. Right there, try that. Oh, might have gotten too far. And just tweak to your heart's desire. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do on this one is we're actually gonna start out with the lighting. So first I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit to kind of see what detail is hidden in those shadows. I don't think it's anything I really wanna see, so I'm just gonna bring it up just a hair. Bring up the contrast again. Highlights I'm actually gonna bring down. A lot of time you're gonna to wanna to bring down the highlights because they're gonna be a little bit too harsh. Shadows we can bring up just a little bit to kind of give us some more detail in the base of the photo there. Uh, the whites in this image we can add just a little bit more. And then let's crunch those blacks again to kind of silhouette the mountain. I think that's looking pretty good so far. Kind of show you the before and after. We've already brought out a lot of the color just by doing that. But we're going to go into the color setting now. And we're going to bring up the vibrance just a little bit here. A little bit of saturation as well and we may shift it just a touch cooler okay so I'm not really gonna mess with the color wheels this time because I like the colors in this image already and I don't really want to change anything uh, effect wise I think we could maybe take a bit of clarity out but then add in a bit of texture that looks pretty nice kind of softens it up a little bit while still having the detail and let's add just a touch of vignette I like to add a vignette to a lot of my images I think it just kind of helps focus the eye in if you've got a center weighted image all right detail wise we're gonna go ahead and do some of that color noise reduction and optic wise we can go ahead and remove chromatic aberrations though I don't really think there were any and we can see what a we can see what enabling the lens correction will do, although I found with this lens it really doesn't do anything. Okay, that looks pretty good. So it goes from being this kind of flat image here to being this vibrant, colorful image there. And basically all we did were just a few little tweaks to that. All right. Another M&M time. Okay, so on this next image is where things get kind of interesting. This image was taken not long after the previous image, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the settings from our last edit, just by clicking up here, clicking Copy Settings, and then just choosing the ones that we wanna copy, which are all of them. And then I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna click this same little three dot button up top, and click Paste Settings, and just kinda of see what it does. I think that looks pretty nice. We might make some tweaks, but first we're gonna straighten up the horizon line on this one again. 
That's one of the downsides to shooting handheld is that you end up needing to straighten your images quite a bit. That looks pretty nice. It might be a little too cool for me, so I'm gonna go back here and bring the white balance in and make it just a little warmer. And as far as lighting goes, I think I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a bit on this one and bring the shadows up just a bit more to make that dock kind of shine. Might be too much exposure right there. Yeah, let's bring that back. We just really needed the shadows up there. All right, I think that looks pretty nice. On to the next one. Okay, so these next two images are gonna be kind of a similar sequence. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit the first one with the second one in mind. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy all the settings and see if that'll work again. So let's go. All right. So basically while I'm doing this, what I'm looking for is how I can make the lighting and the colors really pop. Okay. Let's bring this in just a hair. Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's go back here. Bring the blacks down, bring the white, bring the white up just a little bit. Color wise, let's go ahead and saturate that image just a little bit more because I was shooting on a really flat profile. Bring that vibrance up. Now this, this little um, spigot here should be pretty red, but it's kind of coming out a little pink right now. So I'm gonna go to the magenta and I'm gonna shift it towards the red spectrum. There we go. That seems to make a pretty good difference. Saturate the reds, shift them even a little towards the orangish. There we go. Luminance. Luminance kind of shows, kind of makes it glow a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's add just a touch of dehaze to this one. Looks nice. Mm hmm. We can kind of add a little clarity, make it kind of moody there. Bring in the vignette. And this time we're actually going to tweak the vignette. So I'm going to go ahead and make it really strong. Bring in the midpoint. Kind of defeather it first and uh, kind of change the roundness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, add in the feather, change that midpoint and change the strength. And that kind of lets me see where I am vignetting. Okay detail. Let's go ahead and remove the color noise. Um, and let's sharpen up just a touch. Okay, definitely a much more moody image than we had before. As you can kind of see there. Let's go ahead and copy those settings. And paste them. That looks pretty good. We're gonna crop. Kind of put that on the third line there. There we go. That looks pretty fun. The vignette might be just a bit too much on this one. And the image is looking just a little bit too blue. So I'm actually gonna kind of shift it more towards the yellow there. Definitely a much more interesting image that way. And let's bring up the saturation just a bit. Boom. Another one done. So this next image is kind of interesting because I think we could go two ways with it. We could either go black and white and just completely desaturate the image. Or we could try to kind of make all these different colors pop. I honestly think black and white might look the best. So let's try that. So basically with black and white images, you're gonna be adjusting your exposure and lighting a lot more. Let's bring the exposure up, increase the contrast, bring the highlights back down, bump the shadows, crunch the blacks, bring out the whites. That's looking pretty cool. Well, that should all be desaturated anyway. 
Okay, let's increase the clarity. I like how that looks on black and white images. It really gives it that kind of punchy look. It's pretty sweet. I think we could crop in just a little bit because we're giving a lot of negative space in the sky right there. So let's bring that down just a little bit. Most modern cameras have more than enough, have more than enough detail with all the megapixels. That looks pretty good. Let's kind of shift this over to kind of include that tree. Okay. I like how that looks locked. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit of a vignette. Maybe kind of, kind of change the roundness just a bit. Feather that way up. There we go. Before, after. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so for this next shot, I'm gonna to try to show you how to do, how to take something really kind of boring and flat like this and kind of um, just really pull out the colors and make it pop. Now when you're color correcting, it's often important to remember that it's just as important to know which colors to take out as to know which colors to put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and desaturate all the magenta, all the purple. Yeah, that is starting to look real nice. Definitely makes that a lot more dramatic. So we went from this kind of flat image to something looking like that. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, another one down. One m and to go. All right, so for the last image, I thought it'd be fun to throw a little portrait in there to show kind of what you might look for and do with a portrait. So again, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and crop. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of crop that light out of the side there. Mm, it's still kind of there. I'm gonna crop it in just a little more. I don't mind it too much, but it just seemed a little harsh there at the beginning. So this photo was taken the other day while I was waiting on my computer to render a project and I was getting kind of aggravated. Let's go ahead and bring the highlights down and we're going to kind of increase the shadows so the shadowed side of my face kind of pops a little more. Bring the white out just a little bit out of that. Bring the exposure up just a hair. Color-wise, we're going to go ahead and shift it just, mm, I think, a little towards the blue side. Go ahead and increase the saturation there. Increase the vibrance just a little bit. Now, because of my skin tone, I want to take out some of that red because it's making me look just a little too red. So we're going to desaturate that just a bit. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a... Actually, we might take a little clarity out, add some texture in, kind of soften up the skin just a little bit, and add a vignette. Might be a bit too much there. There we go. Move any color noise just in case. Move any chromatic aberrations just in case. And there we go. It's kind of popping a little more. Definitely looking cooler than it was. And just a touch of contrast in there. Now with portraits, you can kind of go whichever way you want to. I tend to like a little bit more of a dramatic portrait. So I tend to kind of make it a little more contrasty, a little sharper. Some people like them to be softer. I don't know. It's all up to you, really. All right. And bring in just a bit of the dehaze tool. Clarity up just a bit and exposure back up just a touch. Bring the saturation down just a little bit. And there we have it, my new Facebook profile. 
No, I'm kidding. Alrighty, guys. That's it. No more M&Ms. So we're done editing photos. What did you think? Did I cover everything you wanted to know about Lightroom Mobile? You can adjust all these faders all you want. And if for some reason you ever adjust so far that you feel like you've got to go back, you can always scroll over all the way to the bottom here and click reset. And then you can go ahead and click all and that'll reset your image to the very beginning. And if you want to undo that, you can just click back up at the top there and it'll go back. So yeah, you're never really going to hurt your image beyond repair. So don't be afraid to try things. And if they don't work, just go back. Alrighty guys, thanks for sticking with me through that one. If you liked this content, please consider smashing that subscribe button, liking this video, and dropping me a comment to let me know. And uh, don't forget to join me back here next week for my tutorial on editing in Lightroom on the desktop. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.